husband and a wife that were out traveling by a motor car. In fact, it wasn't just any motor car, it was a Model T. And they were out driving the countryside, just enjoying the, the day, listening to the putt-putt puttering of the motor until the putt-putt puttering stopped. And they coasted off to the side of the road, and the husband jumps out, and he starts looking at the car, and starts looking at the motor, and boy, he just can't kind of figure anything out. Now, he thought himself as being fairly handy and he tried about anything and everything in his power to get this motor going again so that they could get well back on their journey. Stranded on the side of the road. Just about to throw in the towel to, to just give up altogether to maybe have to find some new solution to, to hike back to civilization wherever it is that they needed to go. But no fix was found until... Another Model T happens to putt, putt, putter on next to them. And he stops. And a fairly distinguished gentleman in a suit jumps out and says, Friend, what's the trouble? I can't seem to fix the motor, he says. Well, do you mind if I just take a look? The husband, so distraught and so disgruntled, trying to figure out how in the world it is that he could fix it when he's already looked at every possible solution. Go ahead, he says. See what you might be able to do. And the distinguished gentleman takes off his suit coat and seemingly out of nowhere comes a couple just hand tools. And he goes to work there on the engine. And in not too long of a time frame, he says to the husband, Go ahead and start the motor. And the husband does. And instantly there's that familiar putt-putt puttering of the motor. Celebratory. He turns to his wife. They are celebrating because they can get back on the road. They're no longer stranded. Everything's been fixed. So excited that they almost forget to say, Hey! What's your name? How much can I give you? And how can I say thank you? But by the time they look, the distinguished gentleman already has his suit jacket back on, is rolling by and waving, and says to them, I'm Henry Ford. I'm the one who invented that car. No charge. Now, it's a fairly simple story. Not real... Christmassy, and to be honest with you, you can find that story in some variation in many different places. <coughs> possibly true, possibly not. I don't know. But it demonstrates something. It demonstrates a, a simple story about humility and fixing. Henry Ford humbled himself removing his suit coat to fix a motor which had a problem into it that had not been there when it was created on the assembly line. Think of that. Now, listen to this story. A story that is absolutely Christmassy. A story that is absolutely true. And a story that is very similar in nature. But as I say, it's a Christmassy story, and yet it doesn't begin there with a the manger. No, it begins this way. In the beginning, the earth was formless and empty. It was dark. The darkness covered it all. And God said, let there be light. And there was. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters. He then said, let there be a vault. A vault in the, in the heavens to separate the waters. He called the vault sky. He looked upon the waters below the sky and separated them 
and said, let the dry ground appear. From that dry ground, all sorts of vegetation, tree and shrubs and grasses, all sorts sprang up from the dry ground. He looked at the sky and said, let there be lights. He called them stars. He said, let there be two more lights, one greater and one lesser, one to govern the day and one to govern the night. You know them as the sun and the moon. He then looked in the sky and said, let there be birds. And birds of every kind appeared. He looked at the seas, the waters below, the waters so deep. Let it be filled with all sorts of fish and all sorts of creatures that will swim in these waters. And it was so. He looked at the land full of vegetation, but void of life, and said, let there be all sorts of animals. Every animal that you can possibly imagine was then created. Tall animals, short animals, little animals, big animals, animals of all kinds. And then he said, let us make mankind in our image. And so he created them. Male and female, he created them. Adam and Eve. There God would walk in the cool of the day with mankind among his creation. Everything was perfect. Everything was just so. He looked at it all. He said, it is very good. There was no problem until... Until that one day that sin entered the world. The one day that sin entered through Adam. And that sin separated Adam from God. It separated all mankind, really. This problem of sin, this problem of darkness that now still plagues the world. And so, in this, we see that God had to put a plan into place. A plan that would fix then the problem that was not there at the beginning of the creation. A plan that started with a sense of humility. The type of humility that Jesus spoke about in the Bible. The type of humility that is found in Luke chapter 14 when Jesus said, For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. See, Jesus would demonstrate this humility, not just then, but through the whole pages of Scripture, including the Christmas story. See, Jesus was there in heaven with the Father, in the presence of the Heavenly Father, of God Almighty, there in the presence of perfection. There in the presence of, of angels that would do his bidding just at the sound of his voice. And he would give it all up to step down into this world, seeped in sin and darkness. See, it's written in John chapter 1 this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Jesus, the Word, the Word that was God, the Word that is God, the Word that is also the true light. It also says here in John, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. See, Jesus humbled himself by simply taking off his majestic robes there in heaven to put on the robe of flesh, to be wrapped in swaddling clothes, to come 
to a manger in a dark world because there was a problem that had entered it there since creation. See, Luke chapter 2 talks about it this way. There is an angel, Gabriel, that would come to visit the Virgin Mary. You who are highly favored, you who are highly favored, forgive me. I lost my spot. Forgive me, Luke 1. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Shortly after that, there is another angel, an angel of the Lord that would then appear to Joseph, confirming everything was just as Mary would then tell him. Mary, who was betrothed to Joseph. Joseph, who had in mind to put her out in divorce quietly, would have the confirmation, the confirmation that everything was just as was said. Matthew chapter 1. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, God with us. God, the creator, Emmanuel, would humble himself, would come down into this dark world to fix a problem, giving up everything. It says in Philippians 2 about this. Jesus, who, being in very nature, God did not, con excuse me, very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ, yes, was born in the humblest of ways. Gave up majestic robes to put on flesh, but he did it to fix a problem. And that problem was not fixed there in the manger. The problem was fixed there on the cross. The cross that would bring Jesus death so that the problem could be fixed. Maybe you're at a spot in life where you feel a little stranded along the side of life's road. Maybe you're feeling a little broken. Maybe you're kind of like the stranded motorist that was almost beside himself, not knowing how to fix any of the problems so he couldn't get back on life's journey wherever that was taking him that morning. Maybe you've just never understood that there was a problem in the first place. So let us then remember the Christmas story that is so similar to the hat that you chuckled at about Henry Ford. Remember that Jesus humbled himself, removing that robe of glory to put on flesh and swaddling clothes, to be led to a cross, to fix a problem that had entered creation that had not been there on day six when the creation was completed. And it's the cross of Jesus Christ that fixes the problem that had entered. The problem that many of us have never realized we had. 
the things that leave us stranded along the side of the road, the things that leave us feeling broken and beside ourselves. It's only through Jesus Christ that that problem can be solved, that the brokenness can be fixed. Your brokenness, my brokenness, the brokenness of the world. Jesus didn't come just as a baby. He came as a conquering king, conquering death, the very thing that is the penalty for all of that brokenness that comes from sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It's something that all of us are going to have to face at some point, but are we truly ready to face that? Are we truly ready? Because we wouldn't start this life knowing, yay, I get to die, if we had a choice. But if there is a hope, that though we might die physically, we can go on eternally. Now, now we can start a journey. And it's only through the blood that was shed on the cross that will allow you to complete that journey, to no longer be stranded, to be able to actually have life, not just eternal life, but even life here on this earth. Jesus, the, the Bible says, Scripture says, Jesus says that he came that we might have an abundant life. And that abundant life can start even just now. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Savior, Jesus, to declare Him with your mouth that He is Lord, to believe in your heart that He is raised from the dead. That's Romans chapter 10. And if you do that, the problem is fixed. The problem is no longer there. Your sins, that brokenness, it is forgiven. It is far as the east is from the west, as Scripture would say. That it is removed. That your garment is no longer stained. That you're washed white as snow. You're seen as clothed in His righteousness. Those majestic robes that He wears are now yours. But it took the humbleness, the humility of a Savior that was born on Christmas. Maybe you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Today is one of the best days ever to do so. The day that we remember that He cared enough, that God cared so much that He would give His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe you have never made that decision. Now is the day to do it because you're not promised tomorrow. The Bible says that no man knows his day nor the day of Jesus' return. And he is returning, not just then as a baby, but as a conquering king, victorious in all life. If you'd like to make that decision, I would love to lead you there. It's just simple. It's a prayer. It's not any of my special words, but it comes only then from your heart if you truly mean it. If you are tired of the brokenness, if you're tired of feeling stranded, a simple prayer that declares Him as Lord. Would you bow your heads with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we celebrate that you came as a Savior into this world to save it, to be the Messiah, to be the one that would come to fix the problem that this world has, the brokenness that we have as humans. God, your word says that sin entered through one man and therefore to all mankind. That's not the way that you created it. But God, you cared enough to fix it. And God, it was fixed there on a cross. So God, I pray that all those that are watching from home, all those that are here, would remember to celebrate the fact that you came. And if they have never celebrated you as Savior, that they might confess now for the very first time that you are indeed Lord and that you were raised from the dead. That's right. Yeah, I hope he remembers. God, I pray that many will come to know the truth, the true story of Christmas that starts in the book of Genesis and goes all the way through the book of Revelation. The truth that 
you cared enough to send your only son. So God, would you do a mighty work, I pray. And help us to carry that good news that the angels were proclaiming. That Emmanuel, God with us, would be born. And God, we celebrate that this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as the worship team comes back up. Yes. No? No worship team back up. Video. I guess we still have a song for you. However... As you listen then to the song, as you depart from this place, please consider a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you did that this morning, please let us know. I have a gift back here for you if you have done that. I would love to walk alongside of you to help you understand a little bit further of what the Messiah truly has done for you. But all that to say, Merry Christmas. Have a great and blessed New Year.